Welcome back. Now, with summer well and truly upon us, lots of wildlife will be emerging in our gardens. It's nice here, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? Sorry, just look at the... the so oh. nice. I'm not going to grow anything. I'm just going to get big screens of flowers on. <laughs> um, or else just get David Dominey, because he'll sort everything out. He's going to join us now live from his own lawn to show us how to nurture the bugs and the bees and the animals and all the cool stuff we have growing. Hi, David. How good are you? Good morning. Hi there. Hello. Good morning. There's lots of wonderful creatures that live in our gardens, and giving them the right habitat and food and encouragement helps the whole biodiversity of our own gardens. And if you just think of it, there's about 728,000 hectares of gardens all over the country. That's nearly 1.8 million acres of garden space in the UK. It's one of the biggest natural wildlife reserves. And if we take care of the creatures in our own garden, it really goes a long way to help everything that lives inside. Now, you can go out and buy lots of these different uh, uh, items that are about. Here's a, a barrel that has got drilled out uh, holes in um, bamboo canes for little solitary bees to go in. But you can make your own relatively. Here's an old one of mine. I've had this for years. That's had many different bug families in, from ladybirds in with the pine cones, solitary bees in here as well, and bugs and lace wings. They're incredibly good. But I'm going to show you how you can make your own and all it costs is a woodland walk. Uh, first of all, I've gone down to the, uh, to the wine merchants. Uh, very nice. What have we got? A Chateau Coffran. Oh, delicious. So I'm using the boxes. So you pick up a box from your wine merchants that contain the, uh, uh, the wine. Uh, keep hold of the, uh, the packing that you get in with it. And I'm actually going to make in here a lovely little bug house. To start, I've got a little pot here, and all I've put in is some leaves for the garden. I've then put together and stuffed in here lots of little pine cones here which are perfect for little ladybirds and the like so I'm looking for little dry spaces um, in fact got a bit of terracotta pot in here I'm just going to waste that and that's what it is it's really sort of like putting it together there's a bit of space at the bottom I've got some grass clippings that have dried I'm putting in to make a lovely little dry habitat there what else have I got a little bundle of sticks that's been collected I think I did this with the kids earlier on it's a great project to do with children. Some bamboo canes that I've had the holes drilled out of to make little nesting sites for solitary bees. Then I'm going to put in a, a, bit of, uh, a bit of wood up here. But you get the picture. It's about positioning natural materials all in together. Uh, some kindling in there as well. A little bit of cardboard. Corrugated cardboard works particularly well. I've made a load of things like this. Just down here, take a look. There's a, an old bottle there, a, a plastic bottle where I put cardboard in, and there's an old pipe here that I've, I, I've filled with straw. All of these are great habitats for little beneficial insects, and you literally just fill them in with a bit of straw, a bit of hay, some pine cones in here, uh, a couple of logs. You get the picture. So you're putting in together something that creates... It's very difficult to do from the back, leaning forward, but you get the picture. Look at that. Almost a little bit of nature's artwork and a perfect hotel for the little creatures that visit. Of course, things like bees and the like plants are really important as well. We've had a bumblebee on this foxglove uh, all morning. may join me right now. And bees are great. Choosing plants that are great for pollinators. Uh, I mean, bees, for instance, have enhanced photoreceptors. They can see ultraviolet light, so purples like the lavender and this beautiful salvia here. Um, and, and a lot of herbs are pretty good. Thyme sage and the beautiful rosemary is pretty good but this is the big plant to buy if you like butterflies marvelous little creatures butterflies taste with their feet as they go around and they need the energy of the sun you know sometimes you see a butterfly just opening and closing like that it's a bit of solar panel to charge it to to gain into flight and the beautiful cryptic coloration of the petals but this bush here uh, it's a buddleia there are many different varieties you get buddleia davidii um, $12.99, I paid for that. That'll be in the garden for years and years, and it'll bring spectacular butterflies in. Now, what I do as well, water is very important because it's been very warm. Uh, I get a little uh, uh, tray like this. I put just some stones on the side, and then I put the water in. What I'm creating is almost a little beach. So uh, when, the, uh, when the little bees come, there's a bit of a landing point for them there to take a drink and keep in the dry to fly off afterwards. So the choice of plants and habitats is incredibly important. Now, hedgehogs are also pretty good. I'm often asked as a gardener, 
what are my top three gardening items? And apart from a spade <laughs> and a watering can, I'm now old enough that it's the kneeler is the next most important thing. I don't know what your favourite is, Craig. Uh, probably a, uh, a bottle opener. Now, uh, on this area here, it's all about hedgehogs. So there are different hedgehog houses that you can get. You can buy. Here's a little one here. Here's a very interesting one. They've all got little entrances, really to stop the fox's hands getting in uh, to get the little... A baby hedgehog is called a hoglet. And in fact, a group of hedgehogs is called a prickle. Here's one of the, this is one of my kids. Whoa, come, come here. But you can make your own as well. Uh, again, it's another trip to the wine merchants. There's a bit of a theme running here. Um, and you can pick up one of their old uh, wine boxes. Shatters, is that? Lovely. Uh, you just cut an entrance into the top here. And again, you can make your own sort of uh, uh, elongated uh, tunnel for the hedgehogs to get in, again, to protect. And you can make yourself a really good hedgehog house very easy. And you can feed them as well. You can buy the food uh, uh, from garden centres or you can feed them with cat food. White meat, preferably something like chicken or turkey. And in jelly, not in uh, gravy, because that can be a bit salty for them. But plenty of water. You're following the theme here. Plenty of water for hedgehogs to... Uh, to, to you can create a little feeding station by using a container that's, uh, that's cut open at the end. And if you position a brick just in front, the hedgehogs can come in and out, but it stops the cat chicaning to get in to that cat food. Now, with water, it's really key, if you've got a pond, that there's a way for hedgehogs to get out. They can swim. I make this little plank with these little runs just to help so if they end up getting, having a drink and falling in, they can get out okay. Also, birds, they're really important in the garden as well. And uh, there's never a bad time to put up a bird box. The more that you put them into the, the home, they settle themselves into the, uh, into the garden, a tree, and they weather. Even though the birds aren't nesting, it gets them to, to, to settle in and the birds get to know where they are. Uh, there's different bores, for holes for different types of birds, so check those out when you buy them. A little robin prefers an open face because it likes to drown, jump on a branch, then onto another branch before it goes in. The, uh, the little robin's the first bird to sing in the morning, last bird to sing at night. You can get these little roosting pouches as well, which is really like a chill-out zone for birds. Uh, and water, again, it's always important. Plenty of water available in bird baths and keeping them clean. You can use a little bit of veterinary disinfectant to, to, to make sure they're right. And plenty of food out for the birds as well. And they'll come into the garden and you get the beauty. You can, in fact, go online. RSPB, uh, RSPB have got these marvellous little charts. You can spot the birds in your own garden. They are free pets. They will always give you a warm welcome in. Lots of different things in the garden. Plenty of food, habitats and water. And you'll get to enjoy the creatures that share that garden with you. Oh, how nice was that? I loved that. That was Thank so nice. you, David. Thank Thanks, you very much. David. I feed the birds in my garden. Do you? Bird feeder. Honestly, it gives me so much joy. I've got a little robin that literally sit when I sit outside. It comes there every day. Really? To me? Yeah. Does it know it's you? I think I don't they do. Know. I don't know, but I know it's them. Do you talk to it? Yeah, I do actually. Um, yeah, of course I do. John on camera four is delighted with himself because <laughs> he said, "You know why hedgehogs can't swim? No. Because their armbands keep popping." <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> well done, John. Well done. Round of applause to well John, please. I'll go. Yeah. Somebody give him a pound. <laughs> Somebody give him a pound. Right. Well done.